that that is is not really a sub much of a substantive change or any of a substantive change. It's just it's just clarifying language and putting it in a different code section. But Ms. Benson, would you begin by explaining that amendment? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, what the bill does and what the amendment does is to set out a section which would uh, list the terms of eligibility uh, to serve or to continue to serve as a register of deeds in the state. And those, those, uh, those requirements would be that the person be a citizen of the United States and of this state be a qualified elector of the applicable county. Uh, that particular requirement meshes with the constitutional requirement in Article 17, Section 1, which says that no person shall be appointed uh, or elected to office without, unless that he possess the qualifications of an elector. Third qualification would be more requirements that the person have a four-year bachelor's degree or at least four years' experience and this is where your amendment differs just a little bit um, from the bill as introduced. Four years experience in the fields of law, real estate, or accounting, or as an employee in the Register of Deeds office in this state, or as a Register of Deeds in this state. That was added. And finally, one additional requirement for an appointed Register of Deeds and Mr. Chairman, I would point out that there are only six elected register of deeds within the state. All other registers of deeds are, are appointed. But for an appointed register of deeds, comply with any county re requirements not conflicting with the qualifications in this section and in the Constitution of South Carolina. And then the final requirement is not having a pattern of failing to properly record in a time and manner prescribed in section 30-5-90. <coughs> Excuse me. Section 30-5-90 requires the recording of certain documents within 30 days of receipt by the office. Subsection B of the proposed new section would allow a quo or rento action to be brought to determine a person's eligibility to seek the position of register of deeds or to continue to serve, and that would be based upon meeting the qualifications listed in the section. And finally, this proposed new section as added to the act, at least the requirements that are listed in subsection A3 would not apply to someone who currently holds the Office of Register of Deeds on the effective date of this act and during his tenure in office. Thank you. And also, I'd like to draw your attention. We did a survey of county uh, counties with elected Register of Deeds. Ms. No. Chip, may I just yeah. ask this question before sure. we proceed? You mentioned six counties that did not uh, uh, point. Uh, that is correct. Yes, Mr. Chairman, six counties yeah. elect the Register of Deeds as opposed to having an appointed Register of Deeds. You know those six counties? I wish I'd brought my list <laughs> with me. Well, I, I, I remember Aiken, um, Charleston is one of them. Um, Greenville. Greenville is one of them. I, I beg your pardon, Mr. Chairman. I have the list, and I did not bring it with yeah, me. That's but okay. I can, I can get it for you. Yeah, that's fine. Mr. Cole has that list. He can share it with Very us. But, um, but I wanted to also point out the look the spreadsheet, the spreadsheet that we um, that's in your packet that we did a survey of the counties. Um, with elected register of deeds and number of, of real estate transactions, according to Zillow, that's the only metric that we, we, we could really mine, and the, the amount of time it takes to record an instrument. Greenville County, 17,000 Zillow transactions or real estate transactions, according to Zillow, more than Charleston. Charleston was 15,400, according to Zillow. Of course, there's more than just deeds just and, and mortgages recorded at registered deeds office. Horry County, the the, um, the record holder, they 26,600 in the last year. That's that's um, a lot more than Charleston had. Same day in, in Horry County, same day in Greenville, 
and you go down this list and the recordings are the same day within 24 hours, a few of them within a week, and Charleston's 59 days. And the statute requires you to record within 30 days. So just so you know the, the, the magnitude of what's going on there. Um, so does anyone have any comments and opening remarks you want to make? Senator from Charleston. I think it's abundantly clear that it, this would not, it's not going to apply to the current sitting um, Charleston ROD. So this is not an effort to um, run him out of office this term. Right. No, you, you, you could, I mean, it would create a cause of action, a quote warranto action that, that could be brought. Okay, it was to um, the amendment. Office. The amendment, though, says it does not apply to a person who currently holds the office. It's talking about qualifications. Right. Right. Okay. I just it just because it's the last sentence that I was concerned about. It looked to me like it. Miss Benson, you important. want to explain that to everybody? How about that, Mr. Chairman? What uh, uh, the current office holders would not be subject to are the provisions in subsection A3, which are the qualifications about, um, and I'm, I'm, yes, A3, which are having the bachelor's degree, the four years experience, and for the appointed register of deeds to comply with county requirements. Um, A4 would apply to current office holders. Thank you. Chairman. Senator from Greensburg. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, are we saying that an action can be brought based upon past conduct prior to the enactment of this legislation to the past? Yes. You know, I, I find that problematic um, to create a cause of action that addresses conduct that began prior to its enactment. Um, I mean, that Senator, there is a statutory provision that's, exi that's existing that all registers of deeds are subject to, and that's that they must record documents within 30 days of receipt. And this is a problem. This is a multi-hundred million dollar problem in Charleston County. People's real estate interests, security interest in real estate, powers of attorney, mechanics liens that some small businessmen are re relying upon filing and collecting what's due to them and they're undercapitalized to go out of business. I mean, the, the, the number, the, the magnitude of this problem is immense. And I think we're going to hear that from some people, but that is what the proposal is. And, and Mr. Chairman, I, I uh, vividly recall uh, the comments that you made at the time you filed the legislation. And, and you know, I, I practice law for a living. And I've got an appreciation for the fact that we're a race notice state and all of those kinds of things. And so, so I'm well aware um, uh, and I have an appreciation for the magnitude of what's before us. My trouble is um, enacting legislation that addresses past conduct and to have an action filed based upon that. If existing law exists, um, where the conduct to the extent that it's violative of the law um, gives rise to a cause of action, then, then then that's the law. And it was the law at the time anybody's elected. It's the law at the time the, the conduct uh, took place, all of those kinds of things. And so, so I don't have a problem uh, with uh, folks who are not um, doing their job, for lack of a better phraseology. Um, and uh, creating problems for the constituency. So none of that troubles me. Um, if the language in the proposed legislation addressed conduct going forward, that would not bother me. But to reach back 
um, uh, is troublesome. And, and so um, I, I just want to go on record as to say that that's the part that troubles me. Okay. We'll, um, we'll, we'll, unless anyone wants to make a comment, we'll proceed to testimony. Senator from Charleston. Yes, if I could just respond to the senator from Williamsburg. Um, I think that the current state of the law indeed does prescribe his duty, but there is no method to do anything with someone who willfully does not do the duty. So that's the, the issue here. And, and Senator from Charleston, I, I totally get it. Um, and, and we need to have teeth and, and stuff, or otherwise folks can just go ahead and do it, and, and, and it goes unchecked. So, so none of that troubles me. What, what, what troubles me is where a teeth is put in something, and, and at the time the person was, was chewing didn't know that whatever it was was in there. That's probably not a good analogy either. But. <laughs> You've done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me give me an E for effort or something like that. But so I don't have a problem with with addressing harmful conduct, and I I see the conduct as being harmful. My trouble is where essentially we're saying the person ought to be gone now, and we're making the decision rather than the voters. And the person was not on notice at the time that, that this would be the result of performing at the level that the individual did. And, and so that's, that's my trouble. Well, Senator, let me just make one thing clear. As, um, we are not making the decision to remove anyone from office. It would be a quo warranto action, which means there would be due process, opportunity to cross-examine your accusers, discovery, it would be done, it would be a judicial proceeding, not a political proceeding, and not a political decision. It would be a judicial decision. And for warrant to actions or actions that are brought when people don't meet the qualifications for office, and they are they are rare, but they have been around since 1290. Actually, is what we had determined, um, and we inherited from English common law. So, um, and it's enumerated in our constitution. So just want to make clear, this is not us doing anything. It's really creating a judicial, it would be a judicial decision with all the, all the rights and, and, and rules of procedure that would accompany that. So just to make that clear. And so Senator, I would, I would just follow up and obviously I'm anxious to hear comments from others who are here, but, but to, But to to know what the evidence is and to prescribe a procedure by which that evidence is used to reach a conclusion, um, I don't see the due process in that. Um, I, I think that the whole and, and I guess I've I've, I've made my point, um, but I'm troubled by the fact that that we have a set of facts and essentially we're creating a law that's designed for the set of facts and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what the conclusion would be is the point that I'm making. Well, I, well real quick, I'd like to, we've got a lot of people want to testify. Right. I think yes, we sir. need to hear, we all, and we have, we only have 45 minutes left. So. Right. And, and, I, and I hear you, so I'll, I'll be very brief. I'm, this is moving on from um, what the Senator from Williamsburg was talking about, but I did notice yesterday someone sent me a copy of what appears to be a budget proviso by the House. And in that, um, basically, the, the drafter was trying to force county council to purchase computer system that would aid the ROD. The problem with that is um, not even just getting into county budget. It, right now, no, he cannot even purchase a computer system. No, it, it can't be installed or implemented. Um, so home rule issues aside and, and local government fund issues aside, it cannot be installed or implemented because he's so far behind. Yeah, you can't do that unless you're up to date. You can't do that. But right. let's go to the testimony. We have... Um, we have how many on Zoom and how many? Um, 
anything. All right, Mr. Um, David David Humphreys, are you are you there on Zoom? I am. Sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. I'm here. I'm a um, real estate attorney at Hainsworth Sinclair Boyd here in Charleston. Okay. Well, are do you do you want to testify? Um, well, I, yeah, I definitely uh, am in favor of the bill, and I've talked with a lot of my uh, colleagues in the profession here locally, um, all of whom are exasperated with the situation, all of whom I believe that everyone that I've talked to at least is very much in favor of it. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a real problem, um, and it's, it's a problem for attorneys, clients, title abstractors, paralegals, um, the, the whole real estate industry, really. Um, and it just, I, I would take issue with the idea that we shouldn't pass legislation to fix a clear problem that's, that's happening right now. I think that's a pretty common thing when society throws big problems at, at us um, that we pass legislation to, to solve those issues. Um, and so we're just sort of at our knees here trying to do what, what I've been doing since 2003 and um, practicing law and all of that is very reliant upon a registered deeds office that functions the way the law requires and in a way that, that um, we can have our transactions completed and done so in, in accordance with what we've always done and what the expectations of the community at large are. Um, so you share some of the consequences of, of not reporting instruments for 59 days what are the consequences to a buyer, a seller, a mortgage company, right? Um, someone who's filing a mechanic clean, whatever, whatever comes to mind. But what what is the magnitude of the of, of these consequences of not recording timely? Well, if you've got, um, you know, we are a race notice state, so so basically the the idea of recording a deed or a mechanics lien or a mortgage or an easement or anything else is to to put the world on notice um, of rights that people have to real estate. And so um, if you've got a lag between when those documents are signed, you know, typically in a perfect world, you would um, have a real estate closing and, and record the documents almost immediately. 30 days would be certainly the far reaches of, of what would be um, acceptable or, or normal uh, and not cause problems. But to, to get out to 59 days, um, you just run so much risk that that if if the queue is getting garbled up and um, is not done sequentially, then something else could get filed of record prior to your interest getting filed of record, um, and that would just cause all sorts of problems in terms of liens inadvertently being prior to mortgages, uh, easements being recorded prior to deeds, um, all sorts of things that would have um, um, effects that would effectively have killed a real estate deal if we had known it was coming. Um, and when we don't know whether it's coming or not, it becomes uh, impossible to plan for and impossible to deal with. <clears throat> so it's just a, it's an industry crippling situation that we've got here. I have a question, yes. Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chet. David, uh, Senator Stevens, uh, what have you been given as a, uh, a reason for uh, not uh, filing in a timely manner. Uh, what what are they saying? What is the office saying? Um, well, I've got my paralegal Evelyn Waits on with me, um, and she's she actually handles. She's she's most likely in Charleston County to be my actual point of contact with the Register of Deeds office. She records our documents, does our title searches and title updates. Um, so it's a, if it's okay with you, I might invite Evelyn um, to, to weigh in on that um, and, and to see exactly how it's being handled on the front lines. Hey, Evelyn, are you there? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Could you answer that question? Um, well. And, and whatever else you want to say. But. Okay. Um, examples of the current problems uh, include, uh, despite the uh, statement of being 59 days behind, there are still documents being recorded six, from six months ago. 
I don't know how that happens, um, but they are only recently being reported. I don't know if they're getting out of order in the bins. I, I don't know the processes behind the scenes that this is happening, but 59 days is not the full picture. Um, there, I have knowledge among my colleagues that certain documents that were taken to be recorded have actually gone missing. The recording checks themselves have been cached, but their documents still have not been recorded. They are lost. Um, I have seen examples of the, uh, the new staff um, who are still basically in training, uh, uh, doing things like satisfying the wrong mortgage. They really have little to no supervision or double checking on the work that they're doing. They have no knowledgeable manager to whom they can ask questions. They are entering incomplete information in the indexing. That limits what we paralegals can find and subsequently report to our attorneys um, uh, as they do their uh, work for lenders and title insurance companies. Um, it's a scary situation for all of us. And uh, uh, I will say it's in great contrast to the previous administration. Um, I have personally been a paralegal and uh, done real estate research at the Charleston County Register of Deeds for the past 28 years. Um, there have been problems in the past, but nothing like what, what we're experiencing now. Times have been busy, there, there have been hurricanes, there have been illnesses, there have been economic booms, um, but the uh, it's just totally unprecedented, uh, the situation that we find ourselves in right now. Um, so did I... Pardon me? So, so did, yeah, so did I hear you say six months? Yes, uh, I have had colleagues this? tell me I have had colleagues tell me that uh, there have been documents that are six months. I don't know. I can't explain what has happened to the documents in the meantime, but they have only recently been recorded. So when, when, when you call to follow up, what exactly are they saying as to the reason for the delay or the lack of action? Um, I have not personally had that situation with that uh, sit with that situation. However, um, Mr. Well, the, the current administration has uh, cited numerous uh, excuses, such as um, you know we've had so many employees leaving, um, which is true. Uh, I think we've lost about fifteen employees, long-term employees. Uh, in the past three years. However, what, what isn't obvious necessarily is that they are frequently leaving because of him, because of his lack of administrative skills, his lack of understanding and caring about the records he is charged with reporting, and his disregard for high standards of accuracy within the office. One, another excuse is COVID, which is partially true. And some employees have been absent at times, but that still cannot begin to account for the current backlog. Um, lack of funds was one reason, um, but my understanding is that he requested and was, and was granted more funds by Charleston County Council in March of 2021. Um, another excuse is the booming housing market. Uh, there, but there have been very busy times in the past, but somehow the previous administrations kept up much more effectively. I'd like, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask Mr. Humphreys a question, please. Sure. Mr. Humphreys, I, I assume, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you are handling primarily commercial transactions? Primarily. I, I do probably handle 10 or 15 residential a year, but the overwhelming majority of what I do is, is commercial. I, I understand. I'm curious, because of the, the the magnitude of the amounts typically in a commercial transaction, 
and this lapse. Uh, are you having an issue with lenders requesting that they get affirmative coverage due to this delay? Um, yes and no. Our, our title companies, um, I write with several title companies, and they have been good about providing that. Uh, but I don't think that's sustainable for them. I, I don't know whether we have members of the um, Land Title Association here today, but they they very much share the concern and frustration that we members of the local bar have um, because we still have to get these deals done. And so, so the title companies have um, taken on what I think is an unfair level of risk uh, to allow the deals to, to happen. But I've I'm closing a transaction today, or I'm supposed to close a transaction today, um, where a document was to have been recorded, well, was clocked uh, and stamped weeks ago, but still does not have a book and page, um, you know, and, and that's just par for the course. Um, so so title, title insurance has been somewhat of a solution, but I, I think you would hear from the, the um, title insurers that it's just a necessary band-aid and, and not one that is sustainable. I'm curious, how are you handling the, if there is this large of a delay, the Department of Revenue now doesn't have to record liens in your county. They just do it now on their in, in their computer system. You have to go update and search that. I'm curious how you're hand. I mean, is that not just a tremendous risk to your buyer and the title insurance company that we, there's a 59, possibly six month lapse where these potential liens are still could go of record. And since that's the title holder, it immediately goes against that, that, that piece of property. I mean, how, how are you all handling well, that? When, when we're able to record at the counter. So if I'm able to send documents with Evelyn down to be recorded um, live and in person, that mitigates the situation a good bit. I think Evelyn, would you agree? Where it's 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 the mail-in recordings. Charleston, I believe, does not have electronic recording available as many counties do, um, and so a lot of practitioners don't have the luxury that I have of being across the street from from the Register of Deeds office with a full-time title abstractor who works not as a freelance abstractor but actually as an employee of this firm. So she is able to go and sort of bypass some of the concern by, by recording live at the counter. Of course, that becomes problematic because we've, we've had um, the administration shut down um, for certain days or certain periods of days um, where you know everybody's got a closing that's all teed up and we are gonna close the gap through a live recording, um, but we're told at the 11th hour, no, we can't do that because we're not going to be open tomorrow on a Wednesday or, or whatever might be the case. Um, so it's systemic, it's, it's fluid, um, but it's wrought with peril. Basically, the, the way they, this is handled is you've created two classes of, of people, the, the class of lawyers who can actually hand deliver documents and the ones that have to mail it in. And if you're a mailing in or overnight at lawyer, you're in real trouble with your uh, register of deeds right now. Correct. All right. Th th thank you, sir. Yep. Um, Evelyn, I'd like to ask, I think you might be the best to answer, but um, are you familiar with Judge Young's order um, and, and Howard Yates's recommendation with regards to what ought to happen um, at the office? I I did read it a couple of times last week. I I can't say that I'm uh, up to date on all the details. Okay. I just would like an opinion if that's a fix, and if so, is it a, a can it be is it an immediate fix or is it a fix that would take months to realize? Yeah. Uh, that's my so question. We, we, maybe. It, yeah, Senator, we have Elaine Bozeman okay. on also. Um, Elaine is a former. Register of Deeds Office employee, um, and I believe even served as an interim Register of Deeds um, due to, I think, a prior illness of one of the members of the prior administration. Um, and I know that she's very familiar with that order and and um, how it came about and, and might be a good person to weigh in on that. Okay. Ms. Bozeman, can you answer that? Could you address that issue? Uh, 
Elaine, you're on mute still. I think, try, see if you can find okay. on your screen. Yeah, there we go. Right, am I, am I good now? Um, are you asking my opinion of his 15 requirements on this order? I'm just asking, will, will it produce, will it make the office operate efficiently? Yeah. Um, um, and if so, how long will that, will it take for that to happen? You're very, very experienced in the Register of Deeds office. And so you know the processes and so is, is that a silver bullet or, or not? Is that going to be a fix? And if so, well, how long to, will it take? I have to say, I helped Howard with almost every one of these 15 items, except for bringing in Dorchester County employees, because that's the way we operated on a daily basis. Um, you know, we, we had experienced employees. You just cannot hire someone in on a Monday and then on Friday turn them loose, either recording or indexing these documents because there's so much involved knowing the process of what's going on. So what he's written pretty much is exactly what we were doing to begin with, with experienced employees. And that's, to me, that's the bottom line. Uh, there's just been a mass exodus of our employees because of the working environment there. They, they worked under such strict standards under Charlie and myself, Charlie Libran, that they knew their jobs, they knew what was required of them, and they did it. We had a massive real estate boom back in 2006, I think it was. We, at the worst, was probably a week behind in indexing, but we were never more than a day and a half to two days behind in recording what came into that office. So it's 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 not COVID, it's not Hurricane Dorian, it's not mask. It's because he has pretty much run off everybody with any experience, and now he's hiring in these new people that cannot handle the workload that he's seeing. And I do agree, with the boom, he was receiving massive amount of uh, FedEx and uh, UPS. But again, with his acknowledged you know, the, the employees that had the knowledge, we could have worked some overtime and not been anywhere more than a week and a half to two weeks, which is my opinion, behind in recording these documents. And Evelyn, like she stated, she has seen over her years there how, how bad it's been. So um, if you don't have employees that know the state statute, or have someone that drives them to do the job that they're hired to do, um, then you're going to be in the mess that this gentleman is in. Thank you. Any further questions? Mr. Chair, is, is Senator there, from Berkeley. Yes, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone who's, who will testify from Horry County? The reason I'm asking, what, what, what prompt that is, as I listen to uh, and I apologize for, for not remembering your name, but as a listener, to talk much about the work environment, is, it, is the environment uh, toxic between employee to employee or manager to employee? Um, it, you know, I'm going to have to tell you, this is hearsay for my past employees that, are, that work there, that have left, um, that when you come into an office, your first probably, I think it was within two months or something, that he was not going to promote from within. Um, that made you feel like, I'm stagnant, this is it. And then other things started happening about they weren't required to verify documents, um, which is a critical thing because we're only human. We make indexing errors. So you have to have someone come in behind you. Um, people were taking leave right and left. I mean, they were all the time taking off. And just to interject, because my thoughts are going all over the place, even have even if he were giving the money to implement the e-refiling like these other counties are doing and that are all up to date, you still have to have those experienced employees that know the state statutes, know what's required to index the proper person, the proper realist, the, the legal description. Um, so, you know, it's not the e-filing, but it is a lot to do with what's going on with the management. 
And hey, we're getting close. Thank you, ma'am. We're getting close to running out of time for others, but so thank you for your for your testimony. And I want to call some other folks who've signed up to speak. Okay. Um, and I and Mr. Miller is here. He and he would like to speak. Um, Mr. Miller, I might let you speak at the end when you've heard everything, if that's acceptable to you. I think that might be best. Um, but I'll make sure you have. Five minutes anyway. Is that sufficient? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Austin Smallwood. Austin with the South Carolina Realtors Association. Okay. And please try to keep your remarks to three minutes or less if yes, you can. Sir, absolutely. I'll be mindful of everyone's time. Um, Good morning, I'm Mr. Chairman, uh, fellow senators. Uh, my name is Austin Smollett. I'm here on behalf of the South Carolina Association of Realtors. Uh, we are in support of Senate Bill 1031. Um, we have provided to the committee a letter of support signed by our 2022 uh, legislative chair, Drew Street. Um, if you don't have a copy or you'd like one, we do have some physical copies and give you after the meeting or I'll certainly send you a digital copy. Um, there are a number of individuals that a consumer deals with in a real estate transaction. Uh, whether that be a realtor, a mortgage banker, closing attorney, contractor, or appraiser, all those individuals are required to have some minimum level of education or experience requirements to be involved in that transaction. Uh, so it stands to reason um, that a public, a on all, registered deeds office is an office of public trust. The public puts a immense amount of trust into that office. Um, when they are in the real estate transaction and they spend away um, their deed, their mortgage, um, the canceling, whatever it may be, they kind of hope, they assume that that document is going to be handled in a in a correct, timely, and efficient manner. Um, so if there's a qualifications for everyone else in the real estate transaction, it, stands, it seems to be a logical next step that there be some uh, uniform statewide qualifications um, to serve in that office um, from an education um, or experience standpoint. Uh, also, just like there are for attorneys, you know, mortgage bankers, um, uh, real estate agents, et cetera, there, is, there, has, there needs to be a process for a, a consumer, should they not be satisfied with that work, to be able to um, file some sort of a grievance, um, but also make sure that that's a fair, equitable process that does allow the um, defendant, for lack of a better term, to be able to raise any objections to cross-examine and have their uh, voices heard. Um, I do certainly appreciate everyone's time and attention today and be happy to answer any questions you all may have. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, Okay, Miss. I don't think there's any questions. Next, uh, Rex Casterline. Again, try to keep your remarks to three minutes if you can. Happy to do so. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. Rex Casterline. I'm a private practitioner. 25 of my 28 years in real estate. I'm in favor of the bill. I uh, speak for all the lawyers in my office. Uh, even as amended, <clears throat> I don't intend to be repetitive of what I think my colleagues representing the Palmetto Land Title Association will say. So I'll, I'll get to those things that, uh, that I think I'm, I'm uniquely qualified to address. Most importantly, the discussion about uh, what eventually would be uh, presumed subsection two, the quo warranto action. Uh, I'm, I'm strong. I, I understand Senator Saab's comments. As a lawyer, as a prior litigator, I, I, I understand where he's coming from. But I also find it reprehensible that state statutes exist, and the only recourse now for someone who wants to protect the public and the integrity of not only my profession but the integrity of the entire process is to file a writ. Um, I'm, I'm thankful a writ was filed, and it was brought to the attention of everyone that needed uh, that needed to give it attention. But if if we're already violating state statutes, and that's the only cause of action. I'm not sure you should be serving as a public servant. Uh, the statutes existed before the election took place. Statutes exist before appointment takes place. And if there is no key in enforcing it, I don't know why the statute exists. So I would be in favor of leaving the bill ended uh, to stand and it be submitted that way. Otherwise, I'm in. Uh, I concur with all the prior testimony as to the impact, um, as to the educational requirements or, or experience work level requirements. Um, I'm very thankful that the amount of resources my firm has had to expend in this issue has been somewhat limited because we've only had uh, 
40 or so transactions in this time period in Charleston County. It does cost us a lot to continuously have title updates done to make sure nothing gets ahead of our recorded documents. We've personally experienced lengthy delays in as much as three and a half months. Um, but, but I'm also thankful that we seem to see the light at the end of the tunnel with Judge Young's order. And um, I, that's all I have to say, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Okay, um, we have two with Palmetto Land Title. Would, um, if y'all could, again, try to keep it to three minutes. And state your name, please. Good morning, senators, uh, senators and chairmen. My name is Dawn Watkins, and I'm speaking to you today on behalf of the Palmetto Land Title Association of PLTA and its members. Uh, our membership consists of title abstractors, title companies, attorneys, and title insurance underwriters. Uh, all of our members are closely affected by the manner in which the duties of the register deeds are carried out. Um, I'm an attorney, and I was in private practice for over 19 years primarily focusing on real estate transactions. And I dealt with register of these offices across the state on a daily basis. Uh, so I am very familiar with how crucial this office is to the consummation of real estate transactions. I'm now, uh, for the last two and a half years, been underwriting counsel uh, for two title insurance companies which has allowed me to also see the role of the register of deeds uh, through a different lens. Historically, we have been served well by those um, in South Carolina who have held the office of the register of deeds. But recent events have brought much attention to the office, uh, which has heretofore become been mainly unknown to the general public um, and the responsibilities of that office. They've also shed some light on some of the negative consequences, as you have heard uh, from prior testimony, that may result from a lack of knowledge and understanding of the critical role uh, that is served by the Register of Deeds and the importance of that role serves in our community and our um, legal system. Requiring basic qualifications to be eligible to hold this office, we believe is a step in the right direction towards securing qualified individuals for this position. I'll speak in a moment about a few specific effects that you have heard that can result from failure to properly carry out the duties of the Register of Deeds, but for now, I'd also like you to consider the bigger picture. Uh, real estate is the nation's largest asset. We are able to hold, transfer, assess, and certify the value of such assets only through documents that have been legally authenticated by a system of rules, procedures, and standards. It is this system that produces a trust that allows credit and capital to flow and markets to work. Uh, we believe the ROD is the linchpin in this system. Overseeing that process of recording documents uh, is handled expeditiously and fairly to protect property rights as well as business and commerce affected by real estate transactions. Um, I would also like to bring your attention to some of those that are affected by failures in the register of deeds. Uh, to understand their roles and carry out their duties. Uh, most of which uh, are citizens. Um, you have heard some of this from our testimony um, of the attorneys. If the deed is not timely recorded, the buyer, buyer may not receive their annual property tax bill to pay on time and may have to pay penalties. They may be unable to sell or mortgage their property if their deed has not been recorded. Um, they could also incur damages from delays in a closing if the deed has not been recorded or if releases or satisfactions um, of debt have not been filed. If documents are not recorded in the proper order that they are received, it can cause intervening liens um, to be filed uh, or deeds to be filed out of order, both which cause title defects and harm the, the consumer. As you've heard, attorneys may suffer liability to clients for their professional obligations and to correct these title problems, increasing the time and funds necessary to monitor the status of the documents being recorded, which may also increase their fees. Could you could you wind it up and could you submit those that written document to the committee as well? Sure, okay. absolutely. Because we need to wind it up. We we have to we have a hard stop at eleven sure. o'clock. No problem. Um, if I could just mention also um, the view from the title insurance underwriter uh, standpoint um, to represent that uh, should these um, circumstances continue, increase losses uh, due to claims may eventually increase premiums that would be paid by the citizen and the consumer, um, increased risk of fraud for attorneys and title companies. As of right now, as title insurance companies, we are absorbing all this risk for the delay in recording, um, and that is not sustainable. Um, so I would just like to bring your attention to that. We do, uh, PLTA um, supports this bill and would encourage um, you to consider these qualifications. And, Thank you. And I would like to turn the microphone over to my 
um, colleague Sarah Sigbert. Thank you. Good morning, Senators. I will keep this brief. My name is Sarah Sigward. I'm an officer of the Palmetto Land Title Association. I'm also a territory manager for Chicago Title Insurance Company. My role in that is to support real estate law firms in their transactional real estate and them protecting their clients. I have received hundreds of cries for help over the past few years because of the very real consequences of someone not understanding or being equipped to carry out their duties. I have extreme examples that are all true, but are very real that are impacting consumers, taxpayers, and our companies. Uh, in regards to deeds not being recorded in a timely fashion, people have lost out on the ability to refinance. Uh, these deeds have been delayed in four to six months in recording. Lawyers have called to follow up because they have the signed receipts from overnight delivery services. The documents have been completely lost in some cases, causing the entire transaction to have, be re-signed. In other cases, they were found days later, finally recorded, and by then rate locks had expired, so these consumers lost out on the ability to save money on their mortgage payments for 30 years. In addition to that, intervening liens have been filed before these deeds and mortgages have been recorded. The South Carolina Department of Revenue lien database is a live one, so there is nothing to stop those tax liens from being filed. Other people have walked in their liens, and then judgments are filed with clerks of court. So judgments for child pay uh, support, credit card bills, you name it, those have been filed. Because we're a race state, those take priority over the deed and subsequent mortgage waiting to be recorded, and that clouds the title for the buyer and causes a claim for title insurance companies. Tax bills cannot be mailed to the current owners because unless a deed is recorded, those, the treasurer does not have the information to update their records. Those tax bills were mailed to the previous owners who discarded them. Penalties and interest were accrued. Mortgage companies that held funds in escrow were unable to pay those. The buyer did not, was not able to qualify for a 4% assessment ratio, which is significantly lower than the 6% statutory rate that's automatically applied. So when their mortgage company finally was able to pay the bill, there weren't enough funds in their escrow account. So the mortgage company paid the difference and then turned around and increased the borrower's mortgage payment by hundreds of dollars monthly, hundreds of dollars monthly, because they weren't able to qualify for that 4% assessment ratio. They can't get it lower because they need a recorded deed, and then it will take a year and a new bill for the mortgage company to lower it. So in addition to permits being delayed for small and large businesses and the subsequent revenue, I could go on and on, but I don't want to exceed our time. Yeah, um, you're, you're at your limit. Do you have written remarks? or I do. Okay, if you should submit those, but that was pretty powerful, what you just had to the consequences to the consumer. And um, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I don't – I want to get to the next one, but I want to – I just want to basically – what you're saying that is if documents are not recorded in a timely and proper manner, that the ultimate loser in this is going to be the consumer, the people who are buying and, 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 and purchasing real estate and selling real estate in South Carolina because the transaction costs for doing that are going to increase because, one, title insurance companies can't afford to insure a risk due to the basically incompetence of a register of deeds office over a long period of time. And the ultimate loser in this is the consumer. Would you agree with that? Yes, and it's sir. all going to end up the real, with people, whether you die, you have a power of attorney, and you need to be able to act on that. There are people who can't help their loved ones. They can't make decisions for their loved ones, basically because they can't get a document recorded. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, next. Online, we um, uh, Elaine, yeah, okay, um, 
Yeah, Robert uh, McIntyre, if you could, are you still there virtually? You could give two minutes. I am here. <clears throat> okay, if you could do two minutes. Okay, yeah, I am a recent retiree of the office. I've been there for 26 years and I retired December 17th. So I have worked under the administration for the past three years. Um, having started in 96 and 97, we went digital with this office back then. And every document was electronic or not e-file, but it was digitized and online in 1997. So for all this time, we've been digitized, which is different from e-filing. E-filing is not going to be the savior of this problem because it still has to be able to integrate with our current system in order to issue the book and pages. We have one system doing that right now. You bring in another system. If it doesn't integrate, you're going to have a big problem. And the vendor that I was able to sit in on said it would take six months to implement and to bring the employees up to speed. Now, quickly, a couple of things that were mentioned. Um, some of the reasons for this uh, backlog and delay has been the pandemic. Well, during the pandemic, we were only closed to the public. We employees had two choices. We either came into work or we worked from home. Now, I procured eight laptops for employees to work from home. Everybody else had to come into work. Mr. And McIntyre, then, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to wind up because I need Mr. Miller. He wants to speak and we have to, we have, we have a hard stop at 11 o'clock. I apologize. Can I submit a written address? Yes, 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 please do. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Miller, would you, um, you would like to address us? Everyone. Good morning. Um, Thank you guys for your attention. Um, there's, there's been a lot of misinformation. So let me start with initially right now, we are not 59 days behind. We are less than 30 days behind officially with the exception of our satisfactions, which are when people refinance their home. Yes, there are six counties that have elected um, registered these offices and Zillow does not give you an accurate assessment of the amount of land transactions that are going on in each county. Greenville, Ori, and myself, Charleston County, do around 100,000 documents a year. Last year, in 2021, we did 120,000 documents of processing. The year before that, we did 99,000 documents. Um, Senator Stevens asked why. Multiple reasons. You've heard from other testimony about people leaving the office. When I got elected in 2018, started serving January 2nd of 2019, Ms. Ballsman, who'd been there for 40 years, retired the same day I got elected. She'd been there for 40 years. 10 days later, my chief deputy, 10 days later, the chief deputy left. She had been there for 30 years. Has there been a turnover in terms of staffing? Yes. When I got elected, there was between 12 to 15 persons at that time who were eligible for retirement. They took that opportunity. I asked them to stay because we needed their help. Testimony earlier states about how difficult it is to train someone to do this work. It is extremely difficult to train somebody within three months, six months, or even nine months. The work is very meticulous, and it does require a certain level of specificity to do so. Um, you also heard testimony about people being trained without assistance. That makes absolutely no sense because this office controls the housing market of Charleston in any county that it's in. It's extremely important. When I got elected, I took on that responsibility, just like you ladies and gentlemen took on your oath of office as well. I think we all hold that to our heart and we wanna do our best every single day that we come to work. And so my job as a registered deed is to just do that. Has it been difficult? Yes, Charleston has seen a 30% increase in the housing market, housing market unlike any other county in the state, do we have e-recording? And it's e-recording, not e-filing. No, we do not. 
does Ori and Greenville? Yes, sir, Senator Clemson. And that's why they can have a one-day, two-day, or even three-day turnaround. E-recording allows every single employee of the office to be cross-trained so they can do the work. So it's not just having 22 people working, doing separate jobs. Everybody can do every single aspect of the work. To give you how efficient that is, New York City does 2 million documents a year. 2 million documents a year. Their turnaround is less than 24 hours. They have 350 employees. E-recording allows them the opportunity to do that. Senator Kempson, you also asked about the judge's order. The judge's order simply said Mr. Miller needs more hours of the day and more experienced employees. I would be the first to admit losing over 250 years of institutional knowledge in my office has been extremely difficult to handle. On top of that, COVID. I myself had COVID and it was out for two weeks. I have employees who are out today because of COVID. So you take COVID, the losing of institutional knowledge, and an increased housing market, and then not having the ability to e-record makes it a Herculean effort to do so. My staff has been working diligently to do all they can to mitigate that because we do understand the 30-day mandate by the state. And I have not willfully, nor would I ever do anything that would jeopardize my office, the integrity of the office, or even the importance of what we do every day, not just for the citizens who purchase homes, but for the businesses who support those businesses, those, those citizens as well. And so if there's any other questions, I would like to answer. Any that questions? As well. Chairman, I have Senator, some questions. Senator. Mr. Miller, I believe when you're talking about e-recording, you're talking about simple file. Simple file, simple file is one of those vendors that will allow a registry office to e-record. Yes, sir. Certainly. And would you agree with me that when an attorney files using simple file or any e-recording, a someone in your registered deeds office has to review that document? Yes, sir. So that document still has to be reviewed and still has to be and before it can be recorded and approved. Yes, sir. If would you agree with me that if someone walks into your office, someone from your office has to review that document and then clock it in. Somebody does, yes, sir. Well, you would agree with me that when someone mails in a deed to your office, again, someone in your office has to review it. So my question to you is there's kind of this belief that e-recording will save you. E-recording simply speeds up a process for documents to get in your office, not for those documents to be reviewed and properly recorded and indexed. So I'm kind of curious, how is your office fallen up to six months behind? And are, you know, as, as registered deed, you have to understand the impact that has, right? I mean, we're talking powers of attorney that never get recorded, mortgages, liens that are filed in an interim time frame that put the new owner at risk, the fact that someone can't get a 6% tax rate because they don't have a deed to show the treasurer in there. I mean, these are potentially catastrophic things. If, I, if, I, if There's just so much here, I, but I'm, I, I'm kind of curious because in a way your testimony sounded like e-recording was going to be the panacea that was going to fix this for you, I, where I, I'm not sure I see that as the, as, as the great fix. I, I appreciate your, your, your comment. I will say this. To put it in the level of context, in the early part of 2019, my recorders, and I don't have a staff full of recorders, at the time I had five recorders. Each recorder was recording about 100 documents a day. That's, we were doing between 2,000 to 3,000 documents a week in recording. Later on throughout the course of my tenure, three of those recorders left. Some retired, some moved on to other jobs. So their 500 per week they were doing were no longer being done, sir. So to your point, whether or not e-recording can save or mitigate or make it more efficient, it would because I wouldn't only have five recorders. I would have 25 people who would have the ability to record a document. So in terms of expedience, yes, e-recording could do that. But to an earlier point, e-recording cannot take place in my mind and in anybody's mind who does this work until we're within, we're within the 30 days. And in my goal, I would like to be within 15 or 20 days. And sir, just curious, how many consecutive months 
have you been unable to record documents within 30 days to comply with the statute? It's been a while, sir. I will admit, at least a year. At least, so for at least a year, you agree with me that you have not been in compliance with the statute. Yes, sir. My office has not been. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chair, can I ask just one question? Yes. When you, when you came aboard, what was the backlog at that particular time? When I came on, there was no backlog. We had a turnaround of seven to 10, seven to 15 days. So you, you had a quick turnaround, which was in the law, but however, it continued to grow. Yes, sir. I have one, one more second then. Why is it that I'm here? I don't do real estate, sir. I'm an attorney, don't do real estate. Why is it I'm hearing from my colleagues that you're only open from 8.30 to 12 and, and then you close for lunch and then you don't allow people except for researchers to be in there? Um, when I read Judge Young's order, it, it was quite elementary to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you would need to be told that you got to expand your hours. Do you have an answer for that? I, I do. So there's an old saying that if you continue to do the same thing and you want a different result, that's called insanity. Mm -hmm. So what I never wanted to do was to close my office to the public. So we kept all of our windows open so we could serve. The only problem is with the volume of documents that were coming in, even amidst overtime, <clears throat> excuse me, there was no possible way we could continue to mitigate that. So I made a decision to close the office half day, which would allow my recorders four hours of uninterrupted recording. And two weeks at Christmas. Well, it's, it's a state holiday, so I mean, I, I could Two weeks. But we didn't do two weeks. I mean, I, my, my folks had Christmas off and New Year's off, like the, like the county holidays would allow them to do that. And so in doing that, in allowing staff to come in early and stay late, we were able to cut into the backlog by just not allowing walk-up customers. But even though those documents were brought in, they were dated, they were stamped, and every document that's brought into this office is, is identified for the day. If it's brought to the window, it is stamped and recorded. And I, I know you guys are about to, about to finish, but I also would like to address the, the bill that's in front of you. Everyone who does public service work understands the importance of our service and what we do and how important that work is. I am no different. I served as a school board member before I got elected to this position. I wonder what precedent will be taken if additional criteria is placed not just on the Register of Deeds position in terms of a law degree, four years of background, real estate experience, so on and so forth. What if those same types of criteria were placed on your position or on the governor's position, right? If, if the constitutional offices, we can't add any qualifications yes, yes, to sir. constitutional offices. Yes, sir. In my office, unlike others, but like others, like the county auditor, treasurer, clerk of court, probate judge, we all serve in our serving capacity. All I'm asking is um, that we fully understand, not that you don't, but others who are listening and will potentially see whatever comes of this committee, see the opportunity or the lack of opportunity for them to properly serve their community and their constituents because of a criteria that we set before them, which may not allow them to serve their own communities. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Okay, we are past the time, so we'll stand adjourned.